Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And more specifically, welcome to episode two of my etiquette dining Q&A series. So remember each episode, I'm gonna answer five of your questions that you guys send me on Instagram or on YouTube. I'm listening to all of your etiquette troubles. And by the way, what other dining etiquette questions do you have? Drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to make sure you get all the extra episodes. Right, so our five questions for today. Question number five. Jane underscore L-E-E-C-F asks, how to eat elegantly with braces on? Meat, vegetable, soup. So we've all been there, we've all had braces. I had braces when I grew up in Hong Kong when I was around 13, 14 years old, and I managed to get them off just in time before I went off to boarding school at Phillips Exeter. So thankfully, ee, ee. Yes, braces were a painful experience, but definitely worth it. And by the way, if you wear braces, remember the most important thing is to continue wearing your retainers. I wear my retainers every single night since the age of 14 when I took them off. I'm like the model retainer person for my dentist. So yes, we've all been in there. I had metallic braces. Of course, now a lot of people do Invisalign, but if you do Invisalign, you actually take them off when you eat. So what to do when you have braces? Because a lot of food gets stuck in your mouth. Well, number one, do not eat dark foods. What are dark foods? For example, chocolate, squid ink risotto. I mean, firstly, if you eat squid ink risotto, even if you don't have braces on, your teeth will go black. If you have braces on, they will not only go black, they will also just stay stuck in your braces, especially chocolate. If it's like chocolate cake with some chocolate icing, you get it. Of course, if you're with family and good friends, it's okay. But if it's a formal meal, you definitely want to avoid these things. The other thing is that when you eat, remember, instead of biting with your front teeth, the thing is, if there's food in front of your teeth, then it'll get stuck in your braces. So make sure to do some really small bites, cut small pieces, and immediately toss it over to the back of your teeth, to your molars, so that when you're chewing, you're using your molars to chew, and they're staying inside your teeth cavity and not moving out to, you know, in front of your teeth. And after you finish eating, let's say, you know, dessert and it's before coffee or tea, definitely take a loo break just to, you know, to check, check how your teeth look in the mirror. Do that definitely in the privacy of the bathroom. Do not take out a compact mirror case at the dinner table or lunch table and go, no, that is just the least elegant thing possible. It's basically like applying makeup at the table. It's a no-no. So go away to the restroom, do a check, bring your little metal brace picker with you discreetly and do a quick rinse, right? Rinse with water and then you're good to go. Question four. Way, way cool asks, answering the phone call or texts at dinner. So obviously, you know, we all have cell phones now. And in fact, it's very commonplace now, especially in China. And even so, I've noticed every time I go back to the West that at least a lot of informal meals, everybody's phone will be on the dinner table. Now, firstly, if it's a formal dinner or if it's a client dinner or if it's an important dinner, if it's dinner with your boyfriend's parents, girlfriend's parents, take it off the table. No phone at the table and have it on silent. Now, if you are expecting a important call that you know you will have to receive during dinner or lunch, then you should tell the other people in advance. You should say, by the way, I'm expecting an important work call or you know, a call from my visa agency or you know, something, a call that I can't miss, which unfortunately I might have to pick up during dinner. That's okay. And then what you do is you put your phone on vibrate and in your pocket or somewhere where you can see or feel it vibrate so you don't miss it. But ideally don't put it on ring a tone because if that goes ring, ring, ring in the middle of a very nice meal, it's going to immediately affect the whole ambiance. The meal. Now, if it's, you know, a semi-casual, sort of a casual, informal get together, at least in China, everybody puts their phone, even at formal events on the table and it's not considered rude. But obviously if you go to Switzerland or Paris, you know, that would be considered rude. So it really depends about who you're with or what country you're in. But as a general rule, I would say that for more casual meals, I mean, you really have to see what everybody else is doing. If everybody has their phone on, that means nobody cares. If nobody else has their phone on the table, that means you should not either. Now, if let's say you decide to put your phone on the table, remember, have it on mute and ideally have it screened down. If the screen is up, it'll be really distracting. Like every time there's some kind of alert or, it, you know, it, especially at night at the dinner table when the screen starts flashing because there's a news alert also affects the ambience 
unless again you're expecting an important call to come in and then you have your phone on mute and you have your screen purposely screen up just so you can catch it. Generally speaking when we have a meal with others especially if it's one-on-one -on -one, our attention is supposed to be on the other person so the reason we don't like to have our phone around etc it shows that our attention is being taken up by this other thing other than the person sitting in front of us. Now we've all been in a situation where okay we are at a meal and all of a sudden a colleague or a boss or somebody is messaging us and we know we need to reply to this text. In that case, you can reply, but just say, I'm so sorry, uh, or say, uh, give, give me a second, or you know, I, just, I need two minutes to reply to my boss or to reply to a client. As long as you say that, and once you have sent off the message, then you put it down and you look at the other person and say, sorry about that you were saying, or you can say, sorry about that, and then remember what the person was saying before, saying, uh, let's say the person was talking about you know, vacationing in Peru. Then you say, oh yeah, so what were you saying about going to Machu Picchu, right? And that way it doesn't seem as jarring, right? That way you're very quickly kind of taking the conversation back to what it was before you were responding to a text or applying with a call. Say you're at the dinner table, you need to take that phone call. If it's short and sweet, let's say the delivery man's calling you or something and it's, you know it'll be under a one minute conversation, then you kind of just turn your head aside, you know, sort of dip your head and, and ideally also cover because you just want to have a low voice and, 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 and not have a conversation with everybody, but just a conversation with the person on the phone. And then again, put the phone down, say, sorry about that. What were you saying about Machu Picchu in Peru? Now, if it's going to be a fairly long call, which is over one minute, I know over one minute doesn't sound long, but trust me, at the dinner table, if it's just two people, a minute is really, really long. Then you should make some hand gestures to the other person to be like, I'm so sorry, right? Mouth these words, I'm so sorry. Oh, two minutes, two minutes. And then stand up and leave the table and go to another area, finish your call, and then come back. That's if there's two of you at the table. Now, if there's three of you or four of you, or even five or six, it's a little bit easier because they can talk amongst themselves. And so it's like they can just ignore you and they keep on chatting while you're on the phone but if it's one-on-one -on -one, then that's where it's like the other person's kind of sitting there being like okay or you're gonna be done speaking on the phone i know it's a little complicated and there are lots of different scenarios but that's etiquette okay now question three veran ro asks how to sit at the table with a dress. So for us ladies, when you're wearing a dress like I am today, when you're sitting at the table, of course it depends on if you are wearing a dress or a skirt that goes down over your knee, covers below your knee, or if it is a short one. Now, especially if it is a dress that goes above the knee, just remember your knees need to be together because if your knees aren't together, right? And of course, when we wear jeans or pants, it's very easier for us to kind of splay our legs. But if you're wearing a dress, trust me, you think nobody can see because it's under the table, but actually, the person two tables over can see your underwear. So keep your knees together. Okay, now question two. Amora underscore Dora asks, is the Western way to drink soup away or towards you? Hmm. Good question. I have here with me a soup spoon or a Chinese soup spoon, Western soup spoon. And you know, this has been a hot debate. A lot of people say, oh, you know, you have to spoon away from you when drinking soup. Some people say spoon towards yourself. Actually, the most natural thing for us all to do is to just spoon towards ourselves. I mean, let's not overthink things here. But there was a period in time where some cultures, some people said, well, if you spoon away from yourself, then that means that any soup that's dripping from your spoon will drip into the bowl instead of on the table or on your lap. But it's really either way. I drink soup towards me. But remember, when you drink soup, do not drink soup like this. No. Do not put the whole spoon into your mouth. Instead, especially if it's hot, don't, also don't blow on it. Don't be like, no. What you should do is you should, let's say, bring a spoon up, right? Spoonful up, and then just let it sit on your spoon. Let it sit there. Trust me, after five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds, it will cool down. And then, from the side, right? So it's like this or like this. You, you, from really like this side of the spoon, you let it run into your mouth. So remember, no putting the whole spoon into your mouth. You let it, let the soup glide into your mouth. And this is the interesting thing of how Chinese drink soup versus how Westerns drink soup. In Chinese culture, a lot of the times we bring the soup spoon to our mouth and we drink directly, you know, that way. We, and even when we eat rice, we bring the rice bowl to our mouth, right? And we're eating like this, that, that's most traditional. And that's why in China, we don't really have a culture of having a napkin on our lap. But in the Western culture, as soon as a server puts your dish down in front of you, you're not supposed to touch the plate or the bowl. You can't pick it up and move it around, no. And also you, in Western culture, you're not supposed to bring your mouth to the plate because obviously that's like, like a dog. And so you're supposed to bring the food to your mouth, which 
leaves like 20 centimeters of space for accidents to happen, thus why Western culture has this habit of using napkins. All right, and last but not least, question number one. Keldatan asks, what if you bite into a bone while having your meal? Guess what? This happened literally to me yesterday. And because I love to eat fish, I love to eat fish head. I know all my Western friends get really grossed out, but oftentimes we will eat things that have a bone, especially fish, because it's really tricky. The Chinese have a saying that people who eat fish head, especially children who eat fish head, are hen chong ming, which means very smart because you really have to know how to navigate using your tongue. So what you do is you put a piece of meat into your mouth and then using your tongue, you kind of separate the meat from the, you know, you, you identify the bones. And then, like I said, Chinese style, in China, we put the whole thing into our mouth and then spit out the bone. So, you know, when you have the meat, the, the bone out, the way you're supposed to then remove it from your mouth is to not go but rather to use your chopstick to pick it up and put it on your plate. Or let's say I'm eating Western style and I have a bone in my mouth to put it on my fork, spit on my fork or onto my spoon and then lower it onto my plate. Now, if you really need to use your fingers, fine, but you know, just use your fingers like this, okay? So you can see, all right? And you do this. So these four fingers are covering your mouth and then this, your thumb and your index finger are, it's basically like doing this, but these three fingers covering. And you do this and then you put it onto your plate like that, okay? Now, yes, accents will happen, especially where it's like, oh, we've all been there. It's like, oh my God, the bone look, feels like it felt, went right up into like, you know, the cave of my mouth, what to do. At this instance, freeze and then use your tongue, try and take it out. And if you really need to use your fingers, take it out. What you do is cover your mouth with this hand and then use these fingers and take it out or pick up your napkin, right? Say my napkin's on my lap, your napkin and cover your mouth and then do what you need to do behind. Or if it's serious, run to the bathroom. Don't explain, leave. All right, guys, so these are our five dining etiquette tips for episode two. Please let me know in the comments below what other questions you may have, whether about dining or love or career or social or conversation, anything. I will answer them in my next upcoming episodes. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next one. Bye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.